from the City of Entertainment in the Las Vegas Arts District at the English Hotel, a place for the cultured renegade. This is April in Vegas with this week's special guest, Caesar Hollis, Landau Eugene Murphy Jr., plus Steve Dennis, and your host, April Brooker. Steve, you are going to guess our guests by word association. You know, this could backfire if we do it wrong. Steve, it's not going to backfire because you will do it correctly. Has my wife been coaching you again? No, I just have faith in your abilities. Okay. Well, let's give it a try with our sure, first guest. Sure. You find it in space and in a pen. Stars, a point. No. Wait, I got it. It's Particle Ink, Speed of Dark. It's the hot new immersive show in the Arts District of Las Vegas, and it's mastermind, Caesar Hollis. Now, our next guest has a voice that will fly you to the moon. He's working at a car wash in Logan, West Virginia, before winning America's Got Talent. And you forgot, he has several Billboard charting jazz albums and regularly plays here at the Smith Center here in Las Vegas. It's Lando Eugene, Eugene Murphy, Murphy Jr. Jr. And for dummies on the street, we have President Joe Biden time asking, what's in Area 51? Because the Pentagon won't tell him. Steve, do you know what's in Area 51? Uh, 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 no, but I do know what's by the pool, and it's going to make a great show. It's our guest, so let's go. go. It's pool time. What a fantastic day to be out by the pool. We're next to the Pepper Club at the English Hotel in April. I am very personally excited about today. Yes, I am too. We have the mastermind of Speed of Dark. Folks, here he is, Caesar Hawass. Close Thank enough. you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> there we go. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And so you transformed an arts district warehouse into a portal to another world. Tell us about that. Yeah, so um, I'm the executive producer over at Particle Inc. Speed of Dark. Uh, we're right across the street from the English. Uh, and um, the, uh, the, the space that we're in, we've called it the lighthouse. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a beacon that brings guests in from all over the world into the 2.5th dimension. Ooh. Have you been to the 2.5th dimension? I uh, got real close, but I didn't have a ticket. <laughs> yeah, no, you gotta go in, you gotta go in. 2.5th dimension, it's that weird place between waking and sleeping where the oh, okay. rabbit oh. waits before coming out of the hat. Nice. Yeah. So okay. I guess the question is, okay, you have a puppet that reads tarot. How accurate is this puppet? I gotta know. I would say extremely accurate. Oh, okay. Uh, the, you know, the beautiful thing about um, the experience there is that uh, you have the ability to have such like an intimate experience, right? Mm. So every guest is gonna see different things. Um, every interaction that they have is going to be like unique to their experience. So I don't know how accurate the tarot card reading was. Might have been for you. <laughs> But for me, it knocked it out of the park. Oh, there you go. But yeah, there the, you, um, go. you know, we, we took over this space, uh, and really the masterminds behind uh, this universe are the light poets. Uh -huh. um, a collective Vegas based artists uh, who um, have sort of filled the space with art that comes alive. It's like walking into a living graphic novel. Ah. Um, been around for, um, you know, since 2017, mm -hmm. been developing uh, the sort of narrative universe. And so by walking into the lighthouse, you sort of enter this sprawling uh, universe that has um, illustrations that literally leap off the walls uh, and interact with live performers. So it's really something that we're very proud of and we're most excited that we're able to do it here in the Arts District for the first time. And Sweet. when I said close enough, the, the, the context there is it's right across the street from the English Hotel. Literally, across, literally the across the street. across the street. And so we get to watch as the crowds gather, as the show begins, uh, out in the uh, courtyard area, mm -hmm. then you go into the building. So, it, I mean, it's just a, it's excitement in this mm -hmm. area as it continues to develop. So I'm assuming you're an imaginative kid. Uh, how did you, did you ever think that you'd end up in a place like this doing this? You know, I knew from a very young age that, um, you know, with my, my obsessions were things like Jim Henson, things like Labyrinth, mm -hmm. things like Dark Crystal. Two uh, class, some classics, yeah. Yep. Total mm -hmm. classics. Um, you know, I, I love a vaporwave fantasy. And so, uh, and those are like really um, influential pop culture references that uh, that are sort of a part of the, um, the, the visual universe 
uh, that happens within Speed of Dark. And so, uh, you know, I always talk about it. It's like, um, it's like being a kid in like 1987 with your like Saturday morning cartoons and your cereal bowl, watching it unfold around you. It's really magical. So there's some Tronish feeling in there. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep. Yep. Right. We've got. It. Well, I mean, it's really about that that sort of like neon fantasy, right? Like walking into a space that, um, you know, it's an unassuming, mm -hmm. completely black, you know, uh, warehouse from the outside, and then to step over the threshold is to like really truly lose yourself in a, in a completely different space. And I just want to say you had me at Dark Crystal, okay? <laughs> you had me at Dark Crystal. They had me at Dark Crystal. Okay, there you go. And you were also with Sleep No More for many years in New York mm -hmm. City. And folks, that is a great show. And how did you come to collaborate with the Light Poets here in Las Vegas? So, um, uh, two of the, the CEOs of our company, uh, Jennifer Tuft and Cassandra Rosenthal, um, met up with the Light Poets at the Sundance Festival uh, in 2017, and um, you know they uh, became very early champions of the work uh, and really shepherded it uh, for uh, a few years, and then. Um, you know, they were familiar with Sleep No More and uh, there was a sort of opportunity to just do some light consulting, uh, which I was happy to do. Um, the visuals that they were sort of putting in front of me were mind-blowing just as like things to look at. Um, and then I came out to Vegas uh, to sort of see a demo, five minutes, just to sort of meet the light poets and uh, get a sense of it. And I was just blown away. Uh, by what I saw and like all that begged them to let me help develop this alongside them. Um, at its core, the thing I think that like really pulled me to the project was that the story that we're telling here, it's not just like amazing technology that sort of tells the story, it's that like rooted in the narrative of this whole universe is finding light amongst the darkness through creativity and imagination. Mm -hmm. And I think if there's ever a yes. time to tell that story, it's right now. It's right yes. now. Uh, and you have had this amazing life. If you could go back in time and give young Caesar <laughs> one piece of advice, you know, young Caesar living in Lafayette, Louisiana, what would it be? Um, you you will make all the right choices. No, okay. Oh my God. <laughs> you will make all the right choices. Follow your gut. <laughs> stick with it. I've been very, very blessed. Um, I knew at a young age that this is the kind of work that I wanted to do. I was always, you know, putting on shows from, with my family, um, you know, around our swimming pool, uh, stunt spectaculars with like fireworks and, the, you know, the, the whole nine. And, uh, and that just, I, I never lost that, right? It was always about like, how can, how can I continue to play pretend as an adult? And, Part of what is so exciting about what we're doing with this kind of immersive work uh, where we put the audience at the center of the experience is that um, we're here to like shepherd the suspension of disbelief, like really allow people as adults to lose themselves in, you know, in a, a fantasy experience. And I think, you know, it tracks exactly with my interests throughout my life about you Steve but do you want to know what's next for this guy I do I was gonna say that uh, most of a show that people don't know about is all the prep work the writing the mm -hmm. directing the technology all that and then you do the show so you're probably already thinking about that next step what is that so we definitely want to expand the particle ink metaverse um, and there's a lot of things in the hopper that I won't get into yet we'll <laughs> let it become a surprise for everyone uh, but you know this um, I will say this that like this spot in the arts district is just the very tip of the iceberg. Wow, and and Steve, do you like ice cream? I love ice cream, and I'm, wait, I'm thinking of a question. Go yes. ahead and ask the question. No, you can ask, you can ask. Think Are of you, it, think you, of it. You want to know if he was an ice cream flavor, what it would be, or or what flavor he likes best. I don't know which one well, I'm getting. No, if you could be, a, say it was me, Steve. Okay. If, if you, you could, could be, be a flavor, flavor of ice cream, cream what, would, what it would it be? Oh man, I prepared for so many other <laughs> questions. <laughs> All right, if um, you could be a and sandwich. It's, it's crazy because it's the only thing that I can think about right now. It's so hot outside. 
Um, if I uh, were an ice cream, uh, I'm gonna go with my gut, just pistachio. Pistachio, there you, there you go. Pistachio, there's like a little ethnic flavor in there. Mm -hmm. It's green. I don't know how that necessarily relates to me entirely, but we're gonna discover that in the near future, I guess. And you've never made a wrong decision. And I've never made a wrong decision. Right. There you go. <laughs> Folks, check it out. Um, Particle Inc., Speed of Dark, Caesar Hollis. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Great Thank you, and, and folks, check it out. Right across the street. Exactly. So, yeah. so, here's the deal. I'm asking you, what's at Area 51? Area 51? Well, Joe, that's classified information for the government only. Do you know what's in Area 51? Well, the conspiracy theorists say that there's an alien base, secret discoveries, and a possible technology from outer space. No, what's in Area 51? Well, I know that there's like this really cool Mega Mart or something. You can see it right off the freeway. It's amazing. It says like Area 15. It's really great. Oh, Area 15, so you're- Dyslexic, I think. Alien technology, things that we can't even understand. 40 years into the future, we won't even get to know about. Everyone knows that they got the alien corpses hidden there, too. I mean, with all due respect, we, get, we can't just give that information to every president, can't we? Have you ever been deducted by aliens? Well, um, actually, I think I have been. It was a sensation. I woke up in a dream. I, I see him in the visions and nightmares. But... Yeah, I've been deducted too. It's uh, it's it's painful, Joe. It's very painful. I did see one before. Big eyes, big round head, three fingers, nine feet tall. Jumped into a ship and flew away. How you been deducted by aliens? The only thing I deduct is out of my bank account. So I'm sure that that's from aliens because I don't take that money out. Cool, Joe. We got to go. Do you want to drop me a beat and we can rap? Oh, you want to do it? I'll do the beatbox if you want. Yes. <laughs> Folks, it's me, I'm called Joe, you agree? When I was a little boy in Scranton C, I stuttered, and now I'm restoring America to most definitely. Here's the deal, I wear shades, I'm cool cat, and aliens, look out for me. You better not land on Earth. Oh no, you better not do that. Yes, UFOs, I'm here to get you, and I'm here to find out for fun. So, son, I'm gonna go to Area 51. April, we made it out to the pool, and one of the most exciting parts about being in Las Vegas is the level of talent that we get to hang around with, the people we get to meet, and nothing more exciting in my life than Lando Eugene. Gene Murphy Jr. Who's with us today. Everyone knows him from America's Got Talent, yes, and we're gonna know him now because he's hanging out with April. Yeah, that's what? right, he's hanging out with me. Let's do it. Yep, and, and we, we gotta get him jazz hands because this jazz is just is too right. exciting, too exciting. <laughs> and so I just wanna say that, you know, I remember seeing you on America's Got Talent, and you went from working in a car wash yes. in Logan, West Virginia, to winning America's Got Talent. Yes. It's amazing. It's just uh, part of that journey. You know, I was actually uh, singing with my headphones on in those car washes. <laughs> you know, and a lot of times I'd be on basketball courts and I would like dunk on people. But, you know, in the uh, cities and things like that, a lot of people get aggravated when you trash talk. Oh, yeah. So it's mm -hmm. an argument all day. And so uh, instead of trash talking people, when I dunked on somebody, I would sing Fly Me to the Moon. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> and everybody would laugh. Just That's like fantastic. That. So, like, my community always told me I should have went on Deaf Comedy Jam. <laughs> but one day I'm rushing cars and my boss pulls me to the side and he says, you don't really understand the blessing that you have. Mm. And they don't understand it. But Friday I want you to bring a change of clothes to work and I'm going to take you somewhere. So he took me out to this Irish pub way out in the suburbs. He's like, when I'm gonna get in here, I'm gonna give you a wireless mic, and I just want you to start singing. Everybody's gonna be eating and talking and whatever. Don't even pay no attention. Just start singing, and I'm gonna show you what you have. Mm -hmm. And so he hands me the mic. I get a sprite. I'm sitting at the bar, and everybody you can hear all the chatter, the forks, you know, the knives and plates and things like that. And he said, start singing. I was like, now he's like, yeah, don't worry about anybody. Just start mm -hmm. singing. So I put my head down, close my eyes, and I'm fly me to the moon. <laughs> Let me play among the stars. Let me see what spring is like on Jupiter and Mars. By the time I open my eyes, 
The whole place got their eyes on me. Yep. I got twelve hundred dollars sitting in front of me. Whoa! Nice. Yes. yes. Tip jar. Steve, I'm I'm missing the boat. I should start showing up at Irish pubs. Yeah. Yeah, and and I mean because we're looking at you and the voice does not match the body, right, exactly. Steve? Exactly. Wow factor. Yeah, it <laughs> exactly. is the wow factor. Yeah. Yes. Well, it's a it's a good hook. It's a good edge because everyone in this world has we make spot expectations of just yeah. based on looks but then yes. you come out there and you belt out these tunes and we're like wow where'd right. this come from so one thing about it with america's got talent most of the winners uh you know you're, you're still going a lot yes. of them stop mm -hmm. after a certain period mm -hmm. of time what's it like and what's the longevity and, and what's your goal well it, it's wonderful i get to see fantastic places and i'm still from west by god virginia <laughs> <laughs> Yes. There you go. So it keeps me humble, it keeps me ground, my head's out of the clouds, but anytime I leave, it's a paid vacation. There you go. <laughs> yeah, like, Russ Vegas, the house, baby. baby. Yes. Exactly. So it's a paid vacation, and then the long-term goal is to actually be a CEO of a record okay. label. Wow. You know, have my own artists and things like that, and start to mold some of these young people and putting them back into good music. Yeah. Because that's what's missing now. Everybody sounds the same. Mm -hmm. I love the originality of hip hop back in the day and R and B and things like that. But now everybody's using auto tunes. Mm -hmm. and they're getting away from the natural gift that God has given them. So my <laughs> thing is to mold, you know, kids into, you know, the Great American Songbook. Because Frankie's gone. You know, all these guys mm -hmm. are gone. Got a number one selling book on Amazon from washing cars to Hollywood stars. Oh wow, he wrote a book. Yeah, yes, fantastic. Yes, yep. yes. Yeah. It got the uh, Mother's Choice Award and the uh, Indie Book Award. And um, and then I've traveled all around the world from Shanghai, China to Germany. Yep. Um, just came home from Dubai. Wow. And fantastic. so I'm hanging out with, you know, Tracy Morgan, yeah. and Paul Schaefer, <laughs> and Practical Jokers. He yeah. is rolling high. Yeah, and so it's it's been fantastic, man. I'm just I'm just loving life, and I, and I, and I'm always uh, trying to pay it forward. Always giving it back because I've been blessed, and I know I've been blessed. I've never had a singing lesson. I've never had you know stage presence lesson or being able to talk to people. Um, I learned how to talk to people watching Michael Jordan. Okay. Wow. wow. Yeah, yeah. Just watching my awesome. interviews. Yeah. You know? And speaking of watch, you know, this guy doesn't let grass grow under his feet, Steve, clearly. Always I mean, moving. he's going to Dubai. He's, yeah, you know. And so during the pandemic, you went back and got your high school diploma. Oh, yes, yes. Um, with all the accolades that I have, I mean, I've got uh, my own holiday. So every September the 13th and 14th, Logan County becomes Landau County. There you wait, go. Wait, wait, he's got his own holiday, Steve? <laughs> yes. Exactly. Wait, wait, we have a guest that has his own holiday. Well, that's why he's here. <laughs> it's about the holiday. Yes, and I have my own street called Landau Lane. Fantastic. Landau Lane, I wow. Got, I got the Toyo Award. That's the top 10 outstanding young American award. You can only get that when you're in your 30s. So I got it at 39. Wow. And the only people has that is Michael Jackson, me, Elvis Presley, Bill Clinton, and a couple of others. Pretty good company. Yeah. Pretty good company. Yes, and so uh, with all those accolades, the only thing that was missing was my high school diploma. And and mind you, I'm out talking to kids, mm -hmm. telling them to stay in school, obey, obey your parents, do all the right things. But, <laughs> but but when you're doing that, you have to walk that. Yeah. Mm -hmm, so that's I was right. like, okay, I'm doing all the other things that I'm telling them to do, but I'm I haven't graduated school. So how can I tell somebody else to do it? So I was like. During the pandemic, I'm sitting at home watching ESPN, watching Netflix, which is my best friend. <laughs> and I was just like, there's one thing that's missing. And I spoke to my fiance and I was like, I need to go back to school now. And she was like, well, if you're going to do it, I'm going to help you get into it, but don't waste my time. <laughs> And I was like, okay. <laughs> so, so, so you're a role model, but there's a role model. Yeah, yes, right. that's right. Yeah. <laughs> so she she hooked me up with ingenuity.com, and then you know I studied, 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 passed the first part, flying colors, except for the math. So I had oh, to go the back. Math's always hard, though. Yeah, the algebra yeah. gets you because it's yeah, alphabets and numbers. Yeah. <laughs> What's the sum of seven x? What? <laughs> yes, the math gets you too, right, Steve? Uh, that's thank goodness for calculators and computers. Yes. yes. So I had to get back into the mentality of going back to school. And, uh, you know, so I took uh, two-hour classes at a technical center in my okay. community, plus going on edgenuity.com doing pre-tests. And then I passed it. You know, Fantastic. I went to my sister and asked her, how do you study for a math testing? Because she made straight A's. Yeah. And I was like, how do you study? She was like, how do you study? I was like, I study all night. And I, f I failed that <laughs> You crammed. Right. And she was oh, like, gosh. she was like, study 
15 minutes before you go take That's the test. That's right. Mm -hmm. And I did that and passed. Oh, fantastic. You know, so I got my high school equivalency. And then I linked up with uh, West Virginia Adult Education. And now that I'm the ambassador of adult education in the state of West Virginia, I'm on all the billboards. I'm on the back of your Kroger's receipt, CVS, oh, wow. Dollar General, Walgreens. Very nice. So they got me everywhere, man. Like, wow. Walmart, you know, about Walmart? Yeah, what about Walmart? Uh, Let's talk about Walmart. I don't think I'm on Walmart yet, right? No. But you like Walmart, right? Yeah, I love Walmart, except for, you know, when I first got off that show, I couldn't get out of there fast enough. <laughs> I go in for a dozen eggs at 2 o'clock in, in the afternoon, and I'm there until, like, you know, 12 o'clock at night yeah. so I started going to Walmart at three four o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. but as we all know all the freaks come <laughs> <to Walmart. laughs> Wait a minute, that's when I shop. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, yeah. I got to quit, gotta quit wearing my though. juicy sweatshirt, yeah, sweatpants. Right. I'm out. I'm out. And so, you know, one time I'm in Walmart and I see this elderly white man and he's pushing his cart and he looks over at me and he says, Hey, Aren't you that Landau Murphy Brown Cal Rissian? <laughs> Landau Murphy Brown. Cal Rissian feller. I was like, yes, I'm Landau, man. I'm from where America's Got Talent. He was like, I know that. He said, I want to tell you something. <laughs> I was in the garage the other day just tinkering on my truck. And my wife was in the kitchen, you know, just frying up some chicken. <laughs> and I hear her screaming at the top of her lungs. She says, Billy, Billy, get in here. You have to hear this, boy. He sounds just like Frank Sinatra. He said, so, okay, darling, I'll be in there in a minute. I got the degreaser off the counter, you know, clean my hands up because I was, you know, working on my truck, getting all the oil off my hands. By the time I come out of the garage into the kitchen, I hear your voice. Yep. By the time I come out of the kitchen into the dining room, I hear your voice again. <laughs> Swear to God, it was old Blue Eyes himself. Oh, wow. By the time I come out of the dining room into the living room, I got ready to sit on the sofa. I looked at the television. I said, well, hey. That ain't Frank Sinatra. <laughs> <laughs> that boy's blacker than a nation spade. <laughs> and he said, I just want to tell you one more thing, young man. It has nothing to do with your color because you represent us so well down here in southern West by God, Virginia. And don't you forget the by God. <laughs> And you represent us well, you're classy and we love it. You know, you break down all the stereotypes that are going on about us. And I want to tell you one more thing, young man. You're going to win that television show. Because if you don't, we're going to burn a TV station down. Oh! And I hope you did. <laughs> like, oh my God. And he meant it too. Yes, and he meant every word. This guy was like real true to his words, you know, wow. and so it, it just gave me a whole new enlightenment of the of the gift and the blessing. You know, and, and I just continue to pay it forward and I share it with everybody. I tell my stories during my concerts and you know, I try to share the stage with any and everybody, That's comedians, awesome. you know, other uh, singers and things like that, little kids. I'll bring them up out of the audience and let them sing, you know, my way with me, you oh. know, start spreading the news. <laughs> uh, New York, New York, yeah. things like yes, that. So yes. It's just all about paying it for it. What is back. your best show you ever did and why? Yeah. Other than the AGT? Uh, I was in uh, Sacramento, California. I did the Sacramento Fair. Okay. And that's like the hugest fair in, you know, America. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's the state fair, and I'm I'm on the stage with uh, Laura Johnson, one of the Doobie Brothers' daughters. Okay. Uh, yeah. And oh, she's yeah. like my, we're doing a duet called Something Stupid or okay. something like that. And uh, she goes off the stage, and, and I'm standing there, and I'm telling my stories. And I look in the front of the audience, three rows, elderly white women, they have a shirt that says, we love West Virginia and Landau. Oh, very nice. Three rows. Yeah. And I, it just blew my mind. I was just like, wow. So then we leave there and I go to Mill Valley, yep. California, where uh, I guess Santana okay. plays yeah. or something yeah. like that. Yeah. And I'm playing in some like villa or something like that. And, and I see all these flashlights like coming out of the mountains. And it's a lot of female hikers. Okay. Oh, female they, hikers, wow. There is like it's like fifteen to twenty-five of them. They all leave the mountains. They come down and they was like, we heard that voice and we had to come out of the hills. <laughs> so they come out of the hills and they was like, was that you? And I was like, yeah, because I was doing like the sound check at this time. Okay. I hadn't even been, I wasn't even the show. the show yet. Yeah. yeah, so I'm doing like my sound check and they come out and they take pictures with me and then they go back up in the hills with the cougars. 
You've never been greeted by female hikers, right, Steve, or have you? I have not, and if I had, I would not admit to it. So. Who are some of the celebrities that you have met? Say it with me, Steve. Dish, 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 dish. I don't know what dish means. Dish, come on, right. dish. <laughs> Give me the tea. Spill the tea. Right. That's dish, what you're saying. Dish tea, dish tea. Uh, some of the celebrities <laughs> is uh, Tracy Morgan, Paul Schaefer, and Practical Jokers, okay. Ben Vereen. Oh, nice. I sung on the stage with Patti LaBelle. Wow. Born America's Got Talent. Yeah. I mean, just just about everybody, man. Uh, from Jerry West. Oh wow. Jerry West. The you basketball. Know, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Basketball guy. That's the logo. And he's yeah, from West exactly. by God, Virginia. <laughs> the NBA logo right there. Exactly. That's fantastic. You know, just about everybody. I mean, and, and the great thing about meeting all the celebrities is that when I walk in, I'm like, it's you. Yeah. And they're like, no, it's you. That's right. <laughs> Peer to peer, yeah. We watched you like David Robson from the Spurs. Oh yeah. I'm walking through the airport and I see him. He's got like his kids with him and his yeah. wife and everything. Yeah. I'm like, Admiral, man. I shake his hand. He's like, man, we voted for you. That's You're right. Doing your thing. <laughs> the good thing about all this, and I think it's a testament to it, is that you cross barriers, lines, races, genders, yes. ages. You speak to the entire generation with yes. your music and who you are and your testimony and your leadership and your just setting the example for youth. And so that I'm, I'm thrilled to meet you from that side. Plus, you can sing a pretty good tune. Yeah. Hey, oh, yeah. Thank, yeah. You, thank you. Thank. Folks, check them out. Lando, Eugene, Murphy. Murphy Jr. Calrissian. Calrissian. <laughs> yes. Murphy Brown. Calrissian. Murphy Brown. <laughs> yes. Spectacular show today, April. How are things with you? Well, Steve, I had my first driving lesson yesterday. How'd that go? I mean, it was scary. Really scary. I don't sweat it. I mean, first time behind the wheel is scary for everybody. Let me just say the pedestrians on the strip are out of control. I mean, there is a real sense of entitlement. Steve, I almost ran over three. Three? Well, April, welcome to the wonderful world of driving. I mean, you got to be smart because they aren't, and you got to watch out because they don't. Tell me about it. This first lady had her earphones on and acted like I wasn't even there. And then this second guy, he acted like I was in his space. And then this guy with a shark fin hairdo and a lot of tattoos smacked the hood of my car and screamed, watch it, lady. You said lady, huh? Actually, he called me something else. <laughs> but Steve, yes. my driving instructor was less than supportive. Okay. I mean, I only went through one red light. Mm -hmm. And who would have thought that there would have been a crosswalk too? Uh, April, a lot of intersections have red lights and crosswalks. It comes with it. But that's not the best part. It gets better? Yeah. You know so much about red lights and crosswalks that you should be my driving instructor. Uh, just say GLVB April. Gotta love Vegas, baby. At the English Hotel. From the City of Entertainment. April in Vegas.